Hi, welcome to this clip on how to do frequency lists. Uh, that's a very common application in corpus linguistics. That's that once you've um, annotated your data set um, and you know coded for a verb perhaps and so on or for um, any other kind of um, variable, you may want to know what the frequency list is. So in the in one of the previous clips where we talked about manually filtering via or doing the cross tabulation via filtering, that may even be possible if you have variables that only have um, a handful of levels. But if you want to count how many different verbs are in there and how often they each occur, um, doing that manually is probably very, very tedious. Um, but you can use pivot tables for that purpose. So let's go to our pivot table sheet and um, uh, undo all that. I mean, you could insert a new pivot table, I suppose, but um, that's a bit beyond the point. Okay, so um, to get a frequency list, such as the ones that you may want to use for color structural analysis in R, you can just use drag the variable verb down to the rows, and that gives you the values that are in the column verb, and then drag the same variable again to um, the summation field or the count field. Okay, so now we have a list of verbs plus the number of times that they each occur in our data set. And if we scroll down, um, then we have 71 um, uh, total hits of the construction and we have somewhere along the lines of, let's check that. Um, so we have 71 types and we have 40 uh, sorry, 71 tokens, and we have 40 uh, types. That's a countdown here. You can, if you want to, sort this frequency list, uh, because right now it's sorted alphabetically, and more often than not, frequency lists in corpus linguistics would be sorted in descending order by uh, token frequency. And you can do that in Excel by um, clicking on this little arrow here, and then select count of the verb and then select descending. So now that tells us that talk is the most frequent verb in that construction, followed by fool, force, trick, mislead, and so on and so forth. And we already see or immediately see that only very few occur more than once in that construction. So that's usually an indication that, is, uh, that a construction is actually lexically quite productive. For Construction analysis, those of you who are interested, I would um, select that, or for, for many other uh, frequency lists, I will select the entire list, uh, copy it, and then save it to another document for the import into, um, into R, but you could of course have a new sheet and call that um, verb frequency list or something of that sort, um, and then copy paste it down here and give these uh, columns names, verb, and then uh, frequency. So that's something that you could then save as a CSV file um, or a text file and port it into R for constructional analysis. So this is how you can do frequency lists from uh, raw data. Many concordance programs will give you frequency lists um, from within that concordance program. That works fine if your query gives you or only returns the results that are instances of the construction, right? So with um, this data set, I think it became relatively obvious that we have more than half of all the instances of my query are not actually instances of the construction. So if I was just doing the frequency list in a concordancer, then I would get uh, very, very misleading results. So if you have to clean your data set, and I'm that kind of a person that I tend to do my queries uh, much more inclusive and then weed out manually, then you would have um, Excel or the pivot tables to help you get the frequency list if that's otherwise not available. And what we also also saw that um, in um, a few clips uh, ago where you where we cross tabulated 
um, variables that only had two levels, like variety or voice, each of which only had two levels, American, English, British, English, and active and passive, then we could do that by hand. But once you have more values, such as with the verb frequencies, then doing that manually is um, very, very tedious and very error prone, if not impossible, if you have a very large data set.